Yeah, good morning to everyone in the US and good afternoon in the UK. Thanks everyone for joining us. Um, we'll just give a few more minutes for anyone who's just joining now. Uh, if you want to put where you're coming from in the chat, so we all can share our location. Oh, lovely. San Jose. <laughs> no, that's hotter than here. And Boston, lovely. Great, well, I think we'll get going. Um, so thanks everyone for coming. Um, and just to let everyone know, we are recording this session. Um, so if you want to turn your cameras off. Um, and so this is a session about the Sobrani software. Um, so for those of you who already have accounts on Sobrani, um, some of the management features that Tony's gonna show today uh, will be going live next week. So just a warning, if you log on immediately after the session, you won't be able to see them, but you will next week. And we'll have some time for questions at the end, but during the session, if you want to pop anything into the chat as we go, um, and either I'll reply or we'll come back to it at the end. So I think I'll pass over to Tony now to share his screen. Okay, thank you, Hannah. I'll just get up my page. Is that coming out for everybody all right? Yeah. Yes. Good. Yeah, thanks. Okay, um, yeah, this is about the software, uh, digital, digital resources that we've got for Subarani. Um, you'd be pleased to hear that all of the print book is available digitally as well, along with quite a lot of uh, extra um, resources and information. Um, when you log in, you'll see an entry page like this, um, which has all the chapters for chapter for, for book one, 16 chapters there, and all the chapters for book two, another 16. I'll go straight into one of the chapter pages. This is for quite early in the course, um, Ludi, chapter three. Uh, so it's the games and other um, celebrations and so on. And this shows you the general structure of one of these um, chapter pages. Um, at the top, we've got the active book, which I'll be showing you later in more detail. But then underneath, we've got a list of um, other resources. Um, these bars are it's like a concertina. Like that, we can do it like that. Yeah, we know it's, it's okay to... All right. Yeah. Um, the web links, you just click on it, opens up, and it shows a large number of curated websites that we have found that uh, back up what we've been saying and give more information. There's some fantastic reconstructions and um, videos and some of them uh, and so on and images. So that's very useful resources for when you're teaching. I won't bother going into those. You can do that when you try it out. Also in the course, it's very pictorial. Hannah's done some fantastic drawn illustrations for the stories but we also include a lot of images from sites all over the Roman Empire and the image gallery collects together the images that we've used in this chapter in in the book um, but in a way um, that you can go into a lot of detail so you can see this has got a lot of detail if you click on that it'll open it in a new page um, and you can blow it up to look right in at, at the, the imagery, which is really useful. And you can print it out. Um, we've got a license for that kind of usage as well. So you can use these as you want. And your students can build them into projects they do, whatever. So that's the uh, image gallery. Then for each chapter, there are specific activities. Um, at the moment, they, there are three different types. There's autograded translations, which I'll go into detail about later, but effectively you're given a bit of Latin um, for, for this level, for this chapter, and you type in your translation 
and the software translates it for you, uh, marks it for you, grades it for you automatically, and shows where you seem to have made some mistakes. Um, the sorting activity, very simple classification um, task. I'll go into that as well and show you in detail. And there's a vocabulary trainer, which is quite an important um, tool. Also, you, you'll see here audio. Um, most of the stories have got audio recordings. We've got a, a wide variety of readers doing it from different countries. So there's a lot of different accents. And you'll be pleased to hear that, you know, a lot of different, whether you say the for the or what for the, um, you'll hear both of those and they're all acceptable. And I think it's good for students to hear different people trying it out and maybe it'll encourage them to uh, do some reading aloud. All the stories that we have in all the Latin stories have macro on, and that's really to, to encourage them to say them out and hear what they would sound like. And it helps to sort of reinforce um, knowledge of the course. There are also some very detailed maps which are printed in the book, um, but again, you can go in and, and see them in great detail. And then again, print them out if you want, put them on the wall. Um, so there's both Rome and the Roman Empire available. And then some reference works. There's an interactive grammar, which works very like um, the, the, the active book that I'm going to show you. But again, it's these bars that open out. You get all the vocabulary for learning in book one. You get all of information. So it's information that's in the back of the book, but it's sometimes useful to have it here. And if you wanted to copy some bit out to put on a worksheet or something, that's available as well. Um, so you've got a, 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 a PDF for the vocab. There's a timeline for the Roman world. It goes quite a long way through and has parallels with um, other civilizations like the Parthians and the Chinese, Indian and so on. Um, we have quite a lot of references to ancient authors and any any author that's mentioned in the course is uh, referenced in this ancient authors PDF. I can give that up briefly. You see this just a little bit about them, when they lived. So it gives them a bit of context, but it, it's um, nice to know if someone's making a comment about how bad Emperor Nero was. It's interesting to know that he was writing 300 years later than Nero or something like that, or he was a contemporary. Um, so that's how you might use that. And then we've just got this expressions, mottos, and abbreviations, a short list of little Latin phrases and words that you might use, find, find the use in English, and the students might find that interesting. Uh, we've also got a dictionary for book one. Uh, you can use it um, online interactively, very simple. You can either click the letters or you can type them, so you can type TE and you take them to the first word TE. Um, there's some simple cross-references. So if they look up Tuli, um, it says see Ferro. You just click on that and it takes you to the entry for Ferro. Um, very, very straightforward. But again, probably quite useful. And information about how to use the dictionary, how it's laid out and so on. And a very small um, English to Latin dictionary for those people who are doing um, English to Latin translation. Um, and over time, we will probably expand this as well. Uh, th this covers all the words that are needed for the UK um, exam courses, um, the, the OCR and the EDUCAS. Um, but I can imagine American teachers might have other words they want to put in there or use. Okay. And down the bottom, we have some interesting things. We have the teacher resources, which are, these have been produced by the hands up team. Very important. Each chapter has a really detailed teaching notes, um, which highly recommend that you, you read. Uh, if there's anything you, you want a bit more information about, it covers how to different ways you might address stories, particular stories, and different ways you might um, approach the civilization material and so on. There are references to where 
images can be found and so on if you want to get them yourself. Um, the, the detailed references of where Latin has been quoted or translated has come from, which again, if you put a translation in, you might want to go back to the original Latin. So highly recommended that. Um, and then there are some illustrated stories without the text that you can use with your students. They can write in a translation or they can write in a, an, alter, an alternative story, however you want to do it. And they're available in, in colour and black and white. Um, some comprehensions, and so there's one with the writing sheet, um, so they can fill it in on the, on the printout that you do, or um, and a separate one with answers and so on. Um, I'll go through these quite quickly. Um, there's an, a differentiated language practice, which is quite an interesting one. This is where you've got the same exercise essentially, um, but there are the different um, students, maybe the different levels of ability or interest or whatever, um, you've got different ways of asking the questions. So here's a straight translation. This one asks you to complete the sentence with the correct nine, now an ending. So it's more of a straight linguistic exercise. This one, um, choose the word that matches the, the translation. So you can see it, some are a bit easier than others and some a bit more difficult. I won't spend time on that, but um, you can explore that later. Um, and there's a lot more civilization history audio available there again. And also here we've got community resources. And these are uh, materials that have been produced by teachers of the course who have shared them with us and we've published them here so that people can make use of them if they want to. Um, again, they're freely available. So here there's uh, three activities based on the, the further language materials, the language in chapter three. And all, all kinds of different, not all of these are populated yet, but over time we're hoping that people will offer more and more. And uh, quite rich. Okay. Um, to look at the active book, I thought I'd move into book two, just to get an idea of what that's the chapter page, chapter 21, all the same things, um, but I'll go into the active book and you can see again the bars, but here is a complete um, representation of the printed book um, digitally. Um, so you've all got, got all the lovely illustrated stories. And in addition, you're able to click on a word. So you want to look at what Ursa means, you click on it, and it gives you a parsing and the meaning. Um, and you can you know, look around like that, quite handy. So students can get through stories much more easily, particularly if they're preparing on their own. And rather than looking every word up, it looks it up instantly. If, if you want, you can turn off the parsing. So when you click on a word, it just gives you the gloss. And similarly, you can turn on roots, so you get derivations. So again, Wakatis, um, that's underlined, means you've got extra information uh, on derivations. Um, and there it has English, French, and Spanish. We've also got some Portuguese in there, and we're building it up. We're hoping to have some German in there, Italian, and so on. Um, as we sort of identify uh, people with that expertise. Um, some of the stories aren't illustrated, so there's um, just a plain textual story. I mean, there's a bit of an illustration at the bottom. And again, it's got the same features, so you can click on to Sarabat to, to see what that means and how it passes. Um, and I'll just go quickly through, you can see it's slightly differently laid out and actually because we've got more room, some of the small images on the page when it's printed um, are a much better size um, for, for studying in more detail. But again, they're available in the image gallery as well. 
and then all the language work as well is here and uh, well, you can see I'll, I'll stop with that one now and we'll move on to something else move th this is the um interactive activities i mentioned before the vocab trainer the uh, sorting words the sorting activity and the autograded translation so this is the vocab trainer we call it a trainer because we're help just hoping to help students learn their words we're not testing them or anything um that can be done we might produce a separate um uh program for that with a timer on it and stopping people looking things up or whatever um or a limited number of words like you, you, could, you could set a, a test of 20 words but this just lets you go through all the words um that you need to learn um you choose the chapter that you want to to go up to and you can say just tell me, uh, test me on words in chapter 11 if you turn that off or you can say include earlier words if you include earlier words you'll find words from all the earlier chapters that you haven't known so well or haven't seen for a long time coming back through and so in a way it's recommended that you do do that i can see if they're uh, preparing for a test or something on one particular chapter they may want to focus on just chapter 11 or whatever uh, but generally it's quite good to be refreshing your knowledge of the earlier earlier words um, is based on the idea of spaced repetition which is the words you know least well you will see more frequently the words that you haven't seen in a while you will see periodically to refresh the memory um, so let's go straight in um, i've used this chapter before so it won't show me the um, other kind of uh, display of the word which is when the word first comes up, you get like a flashcard. It just tells you the word, shows you the word, and tells you the, the correct um, gloss for it. Um, but from then on, you're into either multiple choice like this or a type in. Um, so if you click the right one, it ticks it and moves on. If you're typing in, after you type three letters, in fact, I'm four there, but three, it will tell you the, the words that match up to that point. And this is to avoid the problem we used to have with um, other type in vocab testers or vocab trainers, um, where students knew the answer, but they just mistyped it slightly. And the longer the word was, the more likely they were going to mistype it. So we, at the moment, it's set at three letters. We could set it to four or make it possible for the teacher to set it at the moment it's three and then all you have to do is click the word that has popped up or pick the words that gives you the list gives you a tick tells you what the alternatives would have been so holy was possible and then you click next to go on if you get one of these wrong it puts cross next to it and rather than moving on it waits for you to click or select the correct one uh, so you get the feeling oh that's that's the right one for that word and you can also use the number keys on a, on a keyboard if you've got a keyboard which makes it a lot quicker so you can go three um, you'll see that at the beginning um, some words come back just four or five words are, are repeated at least once um, because their words have been picked out as being lower, less well known. Um, the, the program records for every word what level it's at and it also records how recently it was seen. Um, and at any point in this top left hand corner, you can click the how am I doing button and it gives you a summary of how all the words um, you've met so far. And you just click on the bar and it shows you individually which words um, you know very well so you're on the 10 that's as good as you can go um, the ones lower down need to be revised and will probably come up quite soon and then if we look at the chapter we're in at the moment 11 i haven't 
learned so well with those words. And so there's quite a few down the twos, threes, and fours. So that's um, a way of the student keeping close watch on how they're doing. And maybe if they want to do flashcards as well or write things down, they, they can use this as a, a way of choosing which words they uh, use that for. Um, here at the top, it gives some information about how many times they've used the, the tab trainer, um, how many, how long they've spent on it, how many words they've seen, how many words they've got correct, and when this particular session started. This total time obviously isn't very accurate. It's not measuring keystrokes or that kind of thing. So if they go off and have dinner in the middle, uh, they'll get a half hour or whatever it is added on to that, um, that figure. So it's not a very useful metric, but it is recorded anyway. And this is the reason that um, students and teachers need to sign into the course, because it means that they can save their information back to the server, which means that it's kept for next time, it uh, provides a role in history. And it means also that your teacher can see the results for all the students in his or her class. Um, so when you're ready, when you're about to leave, you click the save button and so data saved okay. Um, I was hoping that it would be able to automatically save when the windows closed or the browsers closed. Um, and it worked very well for about 90% of browsers and devices and so on which isn't good enough. Um, so at the moment, we've got a, a save button for when you're uh, ready to leave. If you do leave, try to leave without um, actually saving, you'll get a little warning saying, are you sure you want to go? And you just say no, and then click the save button, and then you're good to go. OK, we'll move straight on to the sorting activity. Um, this is a very simple one. There are all kinds of ones about meanings, there's ones about verbs, nouns, adjectives. Um, and this is one, nominative, usable, or, or ablative. You've got a pool of words at the top, and you've got to put them in the right categories, nominative, ablative, by either clicking on the bar, ablative, or clicking the number, either on the bar or at the bottom. Or one there, um, and you can use the, the keys on the keypad. The good thing about if you're clicking the numbers, it's best to keep down at the bottom because they don't move, whereas the, the bars containing the categories move up and down as you add and take away words. Say I put this one into nominative and then thought, oh no, that's not right. You click, click on it and it oh, should go back. Yeah, there we go. It goes back to the, the pool. I think my computer's overheating here. <laughs> it's very hot. I don't know where it, how it is for you out there. It's uh, extremely hot in Oxford here. Um, okay, so let's go quickly, uh, randomly putting them in. And it says, got quite a few wrong there. Try again. Um, again, we'll do do some try and get them a bit right, more right. Just one wrong there. And if we don't get this right, it'll just give us the answer. So we've had three attempts. That's enough. Um, the right. Well, I'll show you what happened. Okay, show answers and next question. Okay. Um, I won't go all the way through these. Um, you can see how it works. Um, if we look at my sorting button at the top, that brings back a list of the words that you of the, the sorting exercise that you've done before. So if we look at one that wasn't so good, eleven point two, you can see some of them got first the first attempt. Some took one two goes or three and so on. And again, this information is available to the student 
and the same information is available to the teacher, um, as we'll see a bit later on. You can go back and get back into the exercise. That's quite a quick one. Um, when At the moment, when we, we um, store the information, if a student has done that exercise before, the new version will overwrite it. And with luck, they're getting better. Um, so when the, student, when the teacher looks in, um, they, they'll see the most recent attempt at the exercise. Uh, we may change that in the future to keep everything, but in a way, we don't want to overload teachers with you know, hundreds of um, exercises for each student. Um, and as I say, one would hope that they're gradually getting better at these. Um, and other things we're hoping to do, or we will do, is when you've got your classes um, data back, you'll be able to find similarities or words that, or, or that, that cause particular problems for lots of your students. So you get some kind of graph of how, um, how they found it. Okay, so I'll now go on to the automated translation um, grading and so on. Right, let's start off again. That was an answer. Okay, so I've got a pre prepared one that I will put in. Day. So I'd say that's a, an acceptable translation, but I've taken it in a different order. So quotidien every day is at the end. Um, offerings might not be the first word, it might be gifts or presents that um, you think of, but the software will try and be as lenient as possible, giving you lots of different possibilities. Um, these um, prepositional causes, so phrases like ad templa pulcra, could appear um, elsewhere in the sentence if it makes good sense in English. So you can't just randomly move um, adverbs and uh, uh, prepositional phrases around. But if they make sense in English, they'll be accepted. So when you've got what you think is okay, hit return and it gives it 100%, excellent. I'll show you what happens if we start that one again and type in a few mistakes. Okay, I'll try that one. So it's very like the donuts, isn't it? what donor means, but anyway. Uh, but we've used different word for pulchra, different word for templar. Um, and we hit return and enter it. And it said, well, yeah, 55. Uh, I mean, the actual exact number doesn't matter too much, but it gives a, a, a gradation of how well it was um, matched the, the Latin. Um, so obviously today didn't like, and it says, Every day would have been a better one. Um, we bring, we used to bring, would be worth better, and gifts would be better for donuts. Um, you can now click on English words or parts of the English sentence that's been corrected, and you can see the Latin that corresponds with that. And we bring, so that's connected, they're linked together. So in the Latin and in the English, we used to bring. And you can do it the other way around. So if you click on Templar, you get add Templar to the shrines. Again, we've got um, my translations, which records when you last did one of these exercises, which exercise it was, and what score you got. Don't bother with it 8.1. I think that was a test that I was doing, and I got naught. 
Um, look at the, the, this one here. And so, as you see, some of the errors are, you know, incomplete words or spelling mistakes, or they're in the wrong tense or, or whatever. Um, at the moment, it doesn't analyze, it can't tell you why you went wrong. It just um, says, compared to the, the most closely matching English um, translation, yours was a bit deficient in these respects. Um, and it marks those up. Um, we're thinking in the future, we might have a, a linked activity, a bit like um, in the stories where you can click on a word and get the parsing. The reverse of that, where a word is highlighted and you're asked various um, morphological features about it. Is this word nominative? Is it singular? Is it a noun? Uh, various things like that. Um, and gradually raise their understanding of what um, all the words are doing uh, individually, um, which will hopefully um, help them with their translation. So that could either come <coughs> before they do their translation into English or, or afterwards, or mixed up. Um, but again, it, <coughs> the aim isn't to test them, it's more to enhance their understanding um, so that they can do better next time. And again, they can do this as often as they want. I don't think any teacher would complain if a student decided to do it five times uh, because they wanted to get their translation a bit better. Okay. And now I'll show you the teacher's view of um, move this over. Um, of the <coughs> uh, vocabulary trainer. So I've logged in as a teacher. I've got a couple of test schools. Uh, one of them is Norwich High School. And I select the class I want. And then I can click view. Very small class, only two students. Um, but this gives me a quick summary of when they last used the programme, what their overall score was, only counting the chapters that they have done, and also showing in um, how they're fared in each chapter. And then you can click on that line and go into the view, like the student had, where you can see exactly what level each word is at. Sometimes you wonder sort of why the discrepancy, some words are very high up and some are still low down when I say that they're brought back frequently. But if you repeatedly get it wrong, you just won't get the word um, brought up a level. So you may have seen a word lots of times, but um, uh, failed to get it right more, time, more times than you have. And so it'll drop down to a very low level, down to one or two. Um, a lot of these results are just um, test ones I've uh, created, they're not, not live students. So. Um, but that's the kind of information you can get. And like before, you can see how many times they've used it, how many words they've seen. That's quite an important one. It doesn't particularly matter how quickly they've seen them, but to know that they've seen 1600 words, quite interesting. Um, and we found the nature of this program is because it's quite quick to move through from question to question. You can easily do 100 or even 200 words in a not very long session on, 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 on the program. Okay, um, then you can, if you wanted, you can look at the other student or go back to your classes and look at the other, see how they did as well. I don't know if you've got any on that one. No, no, students. No. Okay. Very similar kind of program for the, the sorting. Um, again, you choose a class, click on it, and it tells you what exercises they've done and the score that they got most recently. And then rather than clicking on the whole line, you click on a particular one. So you can view on board on um, exercise 3.2. Got 16 
at the 34. And again, we could maybe sort of bring out if they regularly got third point conjugation wrong, um, it, it might mean they need to do a bit more revision on that. Um, it's just very detailed information you can use as you want. Uh, you can also download the results in all of these class view um, things. You can download the results as a spreadsheet, uh, CBS file, CSV file, uh, which will open in any spreadsheet program. Uh, it looks like this, basically. It looks like this page, but it, some people say it's quite useful to have a, a copy in spreadsheet format because then they can um, paste it into a, a, a book of some kind if they want it. Um, and finally, I'll show you the autograded translations uh, progress again. Let's see who we've got there. That's not a very good one. Let's go back. Yeah, we've got the same two again. Um, and again, you can look at their uh, particular exercise, the date and the score that they got, and the exact details of what they, they what was marked as not matching uh, translation that we, that we reckoned was okay. These will, um, the data that we have behind the scenes for, for doing the grading will be up, upgraded itself uh, as um, time goes on. And if you find your students have come up with what you think is a perfectly decent translation, let us know and we can adjust that data. Um, so we have lots of um, synonyms are allowed and but sometimes not one that you'd have thought of. Uh, that that we, you might come up for, across one that you think would be better, and maybe it's a syntactic thing that you think another way of expressing it would be acceptable as well. Okay, I'll show you now um, very quickly um, the management user management software that I've been working on. I'm in the middle of doing a revised version, a sort of final version, which will get, come out next week. So. I'm going to show you today um, a slightly prior version of that, which is complete, but we're, we're, we're trying to make it as easy as possible to use because uh, um, there's quite a lot of things going on. I should explain, well, here, here you can see one feature. Um, a teacher might teach in more than one school. So my test um, character teaches in both the high school and the lower school, which are different accounts, different sets of students. Um, so when you come in, you have to choose which school you want to um, look at. Immediately, it gives you a summary of your school account. So you've got the number of accounts purchased, number of accounts in use, um, leaving that number available. And it also tells you the renewal date um, for that. I mean, you might want to know that so that you can alert the office of we want to put in an order early, but we will be sort of um, emailing people, letting them know if their account is about to expire. And we're also, we're not dumping people out if they haven't renewed. We give them plenty of time to, to renew. We know things don't always work super fast in schools. And um, uh, so, so that's useful information anyway. Um, the other components of the entities in the system are we've got schools, we've also got teachers, we've got classes and we've got students. Um, teachers are quite floating, as we say they can float between schools, um, but they can also, you can have multiple teachers for one class, that's quite common. And you obviously have multiple classes for one teacher. On the other hand, each student is only in one class at a time. We don't have them um, working in two different classes, they're often different year groups or whatever. Um, and through this um, program, uh, or the, the one that will come after it, you'll be able to move students around, um, delete them if they've dropped Latin altogether, along with all their data, or add new students and so on. So let's quickly look 
here. Um, this is a general page for doing things with classes and students. Um, the from and the to are particularly for when you want to move students from one class to another. So on the left, that's sort of a source right, where they come from, and two is the target where they're going to go to. You'll see there's this concept of a pool at the bottom. We've only got four real classes of students in them. Um, if I click on them, you can see uh, the students in those ones. But the pool is where you might move a student or several students for either for a short period while you're setting up a new class if you want to do it that way or in some schools where they have rotating semesters where they do latin for one term and french for another term say or uh, uh, spanish and then come back they want to have their accounts kept so that any tracking data there is accumulated for the vocab trainer and so on um, so they're put in the pool that temporarily disables the student from using the software and it means that if you've got 20 accounts you pay for 20 accounts at your school you can reuse those 20 if the 20 students have gone into the pool and so a, a new lot of students can use those 20 accounts so the account can be used by any student uh, but only one student at a time for each account um, so let's for instance take Billy Bud and move him into the pool. So here I've clicked, I've clicked the uh, from class, the student I want to deal with, is, I can do more if I want, and then the, the destination, the target class, and I'll make that the pool, which as it says, data is retained. And I say move students. So class seven, seven said Latin is updated and he, he's gone. If I look at the pool, He's in the pool, Billy Bud there, along with some other characters who have been put there um, earlier. And if I want to reinstate him, I can put, do it like that. So I look at seven set again. There he is, back with his Bud with James Dean. Okay. Um, at the beginning of the year, you might be well wanting to create several classes. So we can create an empty class, um, we'll call it class five, um, and hit create, and it tells you it's been created successfully when you go back. Uh, the reason you kept on this screen is that it's possible you might type the same name as you've used before by accident, and it'll say, oh, sorry, you need to have a, a different name for each class. Um, so that will work fine, and there's class five in the list. So if we wanted, we could take um, students from take Usain Bolt out of the runners class and put him in class five. So if you then look at class five, he's there. So very easy to move classes around. Um, and once I've got a class selector, I can also rename it if I wanted to. So I'll call this five. Go back. Oops, sorry, I'm back too far. So Latin five is in the, in the list of classes, and again you can move students around as well. The other target has a, it's called Oblivion here, but I think we're going to rename that. But the idea is that's where you send students when you want to get rid of all their um, their, their user account and their their data as well. So everything about that student is cleared off. We don't retain anything any, any longer than we need to. We might we'll, we'll think about it, but we may have a sort of grace period of a few days so that if a teacher accidentally sends someone there, um, they will be able to retrieve them. Um, but we'll have to, to work out the best way to do that. So you do get warned. So if I try and send Billy Bud, move him into the Bolivian, Did he go? Hmm. He wasn't supposed to go. <laughs> he should have come up with a, a warning. I'm sorry about that. Um, the new, new version will do that. Um, anyway, you can also add students down here. 
um, you can do a single student, and we'll do it. Um, I don't know, uh, Angel Claire. Student's been added successfully, and he's now in in the class there. Okay, so let's go back. That means that the bottom should have disappeared. Uh, that. Definite overheat happening here. Um, so that was uh, students and teachers, a uh, student and uh, classes. This is teachers and classes. Um, so you may want to add a teacher or delete a teacher. But these give you the list of teachers in your school and the classes that they're currently assigned to. Um, it's very straightforward. If you want to make Anthony Smith also um, a teacher for Latin 8x, you click on it and it appears in this list. If you make a mistake and didn't want, or you just want to change which ones, you can click on the teachers of the classes under a particular teacher um, and the way they go, it deletes them. So click on the right to add, click on the left to delete, uh, very straightforward. And you get the list of um, classes that each teacher is in charge of. Um, we can add a teacher. Um, I won't go through the whole of this, but you can imagine, um, yeah, I won't add myself, um, but you just, um, give a name uh, and an email um, and then you add the teacher and you can choose whether they're a teacher or a teacher admin. Um, the difference between a regular teacher and a teacher admin is that the admin who is normally, well, the first person who is allocated on the school account would be given the teacher admin status. And what that enables them to do is the more um, far-reaching things like adding teachers or deleting teachers or even adding classes and um, deleting classes. Again, this might be something we delegate to a teacher, but at the moment, teachers are very much have access to their own classes, like we saw with the, um, the various class vocab trainers and um, sorting activities. Um, but at the moment, that, that's um the difference that a teacher admin has those extra capabilities within the system i'll go back and let me go back here with something i meant to show you as well which is in the managed students um when you see the list of students initially it just gives their names but if you click on this tick box above it show username and temporary password it expands it out and tells you what their username within the system is. Um, this is created by the system from their username, their, their actual name, or whatever you provide here. Um, some teachers who are more bothered about um, privacy and so on might actually call their students Angel C and James D, in which case the username would be Angel D, James D. Um, because we've already got thousands of students doing this, um, there will be some overlap of names. So if you try and um, create someone who has a name already in the system, then their username will be those names combined together but with a numerical uh, distinguisher at the end. So you might get James D 14 or something like that. Um, and then the temp password, the temporary password, is what you, the system allocates this password for the student. You as a teacher tell your student what their temporary password is. And then the first time they sign in, it's recognized as a temporary password and they're given uh, a new permanent password, which only they know. So the privacy is, is maintained. But we, it's also, we decided to do it this way. So students aren't tempted to use um, passwords that they've used on their own accounts for banking or 
uh, Facebook or, or whatever, because we are absolutely trying to minimize the possibility of any data leaks, any problems. Um, I mean, this is held very securely anyway, and you know, everything's encrypted, um, but just to minimize any problems, that's the way we do it. Um, now, sometimes students will forget their passwords. They've changed it, it's been changed to something new, and then they've forgotten what it was. They didn't jot it down somewhere, and they'll come back and say, can you give me a new password? At which point you just click the new password button and we'll say, yeah, new password set up correctly. And star 94 temp is a new temporary password that they can go in and use once and then they get a, a new permanent password. That's pretty much um, the user management stuff. The new version will look different, um, but the functionality is very much what I've described there. You can set up, remove classes, rename them. You can add, remove students. Uh, students you can give you password to. You can add add students. I didn't show you. You can add bulk add them by um, importing them from a spreadsheet or from a text file and so on. Uh, that's very straightforward. So that's the end of that. I have two other things you might be interested in. I can show you very quickly but really just as a point of view to go off and look at them. And they're more for students or for teachers um, who are more advanced at Latin. Um, this is a, a word game where you try and, I'll show you very quickly. Um, uh, then, uh, let me think what a, a good word. Well, you can just say May. And you say, oh, May, click, yes. And it's putting all this down here. Uh, or let's keep it simple, pay. Uh, I don't think there any smarter ones. Do you raise or S? Raise, yeah, ra raise. Oh, yeah. Once you get on the roll, you can unmute and yeah, shout. Right, raise and rem, yeah, and so on. You get three minutes to do this, and then it times out, and I can stop it early if I want. And it tells me, oh, actually, I could have got 699 points. You get a point for each letter in the word. And 156 votes. Well, all the words are derived from a list um, more for 16 year old students doing uh, exams and so on. But it, it's astonishing how many words there are there. <laughs> um, and if you click on it, it gives you a little dictionary entry. Um, the English and also what the parsing, one of the parsing, obviously some words will have lots, it only picks out one of those, but it can be quite a useful little teaching um, activity. And then the one other one I'll show you, it's called um, uh, a game, a, some people call it Othello, um, and oh yeah, the first, all it, it starts off, it tells you the first letter. And so you have to think, ooh, what would be a possibility of starting second? Right, those first two letters were correct. The next ones were, weren't right. And if they haven't got any color on them, it means they just aren't in the word. So there's no point me typing in a, a word with another S or a T or an I in it. Anyway, you, you, you get the idea. You, carry on like that. But I think I'll stop now. You can find these on the Hands Up website and right at the top level there's a, a connection to a link to games and Katana Areco are there. As I say, they're for a more advanced students. You might do cut down versions for each chapter in, in Sibirani. Um, it'd be fun for people just beginning Latin as well. So, I'll stop sharing my screen now. Um, and if anybody would like to ask any questions or if anything's come up in the, the chat that I could answer. Yeah, I think there's two questions that I've left unanswered in the chat. So the first was from Christopher um, asking, will teachers be able to see student progress in real time? So if you're assigning it during a class, can teachers then check up how the students are doing in real time? Um, 
So I'd need to refresh the screen, um, refresh the window. We could actually put a refresh button on there, but if you just do like, it, it, it's just in the browser, just the browser page, if you um, control R or you know, refresh, um, the, the latest versions on in the database will be retrieved and, and displayed to you. Um, so it's not it's not real time, real time, but it it, it it's fairly good. <laughs> yeah. If you refresh, you'll get the latest ones. Um, yeah. The other question was about how the marks are awarded in the auto grading. Um, so does the does the separate marks for the verbs, so by person or meaning or tense? Uh, I think you said it's just by matching it to the English sense. Yeah, but um, we when we author the, the the sentences and provide the linking between Latin and English and so on, we can also put weighting on particular words, often verbs or verbal phrases, um, to say this is worth two. You know, and and often we'll only give one mark to a phrase in English might be to the city, or so a, a preposition and, and a noun, that might just warrant one mark. So if you don't get that, um, you, you don't get any mark for that. Um, so it's a little bit flexible, but as I say, it's not doing full syntactic analysis and, um, and so on. Um, if you try typing Latin into, uh, uh, yeah, Latin into Google Translate. You can see what a computer comes up with as a, an automated answer. Not very helpful, and you wouldn't be very happy if your students submitted it. So we're focused on what English they've actually produced and how close or deviant it is from um, a whole battery of, of different possible translations of that sentence. Okay. Yeah. If anyone wants to unmute and ask a question live, you can feel free or or add anything to the chat. I've got a few more minutes if there's any more questions, but maybe Tony's covered it all. <laughs> we also have, if anybody wants to know more about the course, uh, I don't know if Hannah mentioned it, you, you can schedule a Zoom meeting with members of the team, even if it's just for a few minutes, just to sort of ask some questions. Or of course, you can um, email us at contact at um, handsupeducation.org. You'll find it on the web page, um, and we'll answer your questions as quickly as we can. In the current circumstances, most people are around most of the time, uh, so we can be quite responsive. Although the team are all on European time, uh, Hannah generally is in, in Portugal. I think that might be Tony's internet, which has cut out. <laughs> Maybe that is a sign <laughs> that this should be the end of the session. <laughs> so thank you everyone for coming. Um, if there are any more questions, feel free to email or as you said, uh, schedule a chat. Um, that's a functionality on the Sibrani website. Um, and the email is contact at handsupeducation.org. Um, and we've got some more sessions. We've got a session tomorrow on the storyline of Sobrani, so books one and two. And uh, next week we've got a session with the curator at the British Museum on Monday. And, oh, no, language teaching on Monday, curator at the British Museum on Tuesday, and then our teacher meet on uh, Wednesday. So hopefully we'll be seeing some of you there. And otherwise, have a good rest of the day. Thank you.